Hey, welcome to Cape Men. Thanks for being here. My name is David Drum, and what you're about to watch is the teaching portion of our Tuesday Night Men's Group. If you're interested in learning more about who we are and what we do, be sure to look in the description of this video for the links to Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for being here. And it is really, really good to be here with you. I know, I know it's a lot of new faces. Part of that could be I've been gone for a bit. Um, but if you're newer here, my name's Brian. I'm one of the pastors here at Cape Christian. I oversee men along with, with Dave Drum, and we are excited you're here. If this is your first or second time, if you wouldn't mind raising your hands, we're not going to embarrass you in any way. Can we give it a holy cow all over them? Yeah. <clears throat> well, if I were you, I'd want to know what's going to go on here. Well, we, uh, Scripture says this, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We not only believe, we know that men are better when we're together. And we're all about becoming the men of God he's created us to be. And how many of you want to be better? Oh, yeah. Okay, you're in, you're in a good, good place. Uh, I'll just give you a little recap. Several of you asked. I have been gone for three weeks. It's great to be back. The only thing about my vacation I didn't like is I missed three Tuesdays, and I didn't like that. But I also know you're in great hands. You had Marco, you had Mike, uh, Dave and Mike Ash, you had Brandon for the, for the breakfast. And it's just so cool, not just to see numbers, but here's what's happening here. In case you don't know, God is changing lives. This is not about doing church. It's not about doing religion. It's about the Holy, allowing the Holy Spirit to turn us in to who he's created us to be. So uh, as much as I miss being gone, a couple of you asked me how my trip was. I'll give you a quick recap. Got to go to Hawaii for two weeks, which is always amazing. The really cool thing is uh, I spent nine days with my one. I went to Maui, he and his wife, my wife and I, with my one. He's not saved yet. He is so close. And just the interactions we had, and, and uh, he's a real rough gruff on the outside. He was... Uh, cocaine addict and alcoholic for decades. He now has been clean and sober for 28 years, runs, runs a business in Phoenix, doing great. And we just have a love for Jimmy. His name's Jimmy. We have no agenda. If he, talk, he wants to talk about church and God. We talk about church and God. If not, we talk about something else. And it was just the coolest thing to see him uh, hungry, because I don't uh, flaunt things, but I don't hide it. In the morning, I had my stack of devotions up in my journal. He goes, hey, Dems, what's that? <laughs> he talks like that. Hey, Dems, pretty good gig you got here, Dems. He go, what's that thing you do in the morning? I go, well, you know, I just I pray over my family and I read the Bible and write down things that kind of speak to my heart. And I figure there's enough negative things I'm going to encounter during the day that I'm going to start with a positive way. He goes, oh, that's kind of a good deal, good idea. He starts with Fox News about four o'clock in the morning, which that's fine. <clears throat> but <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was it was an amazing time, and my relational cup got filled. Not only got to go on vacation. And then we got to go to Oahu with some, one of my closest friends who we've done ministry with over the years, church in Omaha, got to do that. Uh, one of the things, uh, then I was back for two days, and then I was here last weekend because I flew to Omaha, did a wedding, and what was really cool with that was uh, it showed me the importance. I got to be with people I've done a lot of life with, and I know Dave and Mike Ash, the, the week that they, they shared the importance of accountability. These are the people that will hold me accountable, like, how you doing? Great. No, how you really doing? And anyway, it was, it was an amazing time, and I, I'm thankful to work at a church that uh, believes in Sabbath, believes in, hey, go get, refuel, get refreshed, take your time off, so, but it's great, great to be back. Okay, quick question. So we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about something that I have struggled with over the years. I'm trying to get better. My guess is you maybe struggle with this, and it's the, uh, the title of tonight's message is Teachability. How do you handle correction. Remember that term, how do you deal with rejection? Uh, you know, we have, a, we have a church code, many of you know that, but some of you may not know, we have a team code. So we're gonna, I'm going to pull the curtain back so you can kind of see what we get taught and how we get encouraged and challenged as a staff. And so our team code has these, these, uh, these components, and this teachability is one of them. It's time with God, number one. It's work ethic. I love this. Have fun. Speak life. It's team. Flexibility self-awareness, resilience, humility, and teachability. And to me, those last two go hand in hand. If you aren't humble, you won't be teachable. So we're going to talk about how do you deal with correction. You know, um, when I first came here, I think if you, some of you might have heard, I shared the first breakfast. I don't, I don't expect you to remember because I don't remember what I said five minutes ago. But one of the things when I shared here was the first men's breakfast I shared was this, three things, three challenges. Number one was go hard after Jesus. Be the best version of you that you can be. And then third was live a life worth imitating. Well, I would say this, those last two, 
you can't do if you can't be coached, if you can't be instructed, if you can't be challenged, and if you can't be corrected. You know, Micah 6, 8, one of my life verses, we actually, uh, Corey did a series on this, what, here less than a year ago. We got the shirts probably in the room. And uh, it's, it's a great verse because if I, if I would ask you, if, hey, if you, if, you wanted, if you knew there was a verse in the Bible that asked, told you what God requires of you, would you want to know what that is? I think all of us would say yes. Micah 6, 8 says this, I, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Three things. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Do justly, do the right thing. Let's be men of integrity. Can you get an amen on that? We're, we're going to make mistakes, but let's just be men of our word, be men of, men of integrity. Love mercy. That To me, that means cut people slack, give them grace. Let's be grace givers instead. Of, we don't need a bunch more legalists. We need grace givers. And three, this is the one I've struggled with, and it ties into this talk, is walk humbly with your God. Now, I think it's easy for all of us to say, man, oh, I can be humble before God. But here's what I'm learning, and here's the other thing. I'm going to share this right up front. You know what I'm learning? Is you never fully learn anything. You might get new knowledge. You might get new revelation, but there's more to know, more to grow. I don't care if it's academically, uh, vocationally, athletically, more to know, more to grow. So here's the reality where I really got challenged on this. God said, the way you walk humbly before me, here we go, is, is how you walk humbly before men. And we don't get to pick who they are. <laughs> oh, I'll be humble before you, God, but don't ask me to be humble before Dr. Joe, of all people. <laughs> I mean, your boss, you fill in the blanks. So tonight, we're going to really look at three areas. You know, here's the deal. It's hard to be the best version of you. Well, it's impossible if you can't be coachable, teachable. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask this question. I'm going to share a little bit of my story, and then we're going to talk about three key areas, and then you're going to have time to unpack this. Um, I'm going I'm to ask for a show of hands. How many, of you, how many of you in this room have either known or been a know-it-all? Raise your hand. I can raise both because I've known a bunch and I was one. So this message is as much for me as it is for anybody else in this room. You know what the tragedy of a know-it-all? <laughs> they can never learn anything new because they think they know everything. So a little bit about my family trait. So we have a German background. Uh, our, our family heritage is hard working, good work ethic. I'm thankful for that. But a part of it, there's a perfection level. There's some things in our family that, that isn't great that I didn't want to perpetuate down to my kids and grandkids. And it was this perfectionist, always being right, always having the last word. No one can tell us anything. I remember even, look, I don't remember so much because we moved away, but my brother remembers. We go to my one grandma's house, my mom's mom, and Oh, just fun and laughter and, and never hurt, said a bad word about anybody, just joy in the house. And in the demo, in the demo side, it was, she was a good woman, but he said, yeah, they were always talking about there were better farmers than everybody, better athletes than everybody. They were just smarter than everybody. And so there, and I saw that, <clears throat> that trait passed down. I, I, you're looking at, it was really hard for me to be corrected, and I still have challenges. See, here's the reality. None of us like that. How many of you like to be right? Am I the only one? No, I know I'm not. And we don't like to be corrected sometimes, but if we can't be corrected, we can't get better. So, for, you know, so I, I, to be honest, individually, I struggle with pride, <clears throat> ego, and vanity before I got saved. And it doesn't go away. Do you, if you notice some of those things don't go away even after you get born again? They still knock at the door. Pride. You know, it's interesting. What letter of the alphabet is right in the middle of the word sin? What letter of the alphabet is right in the middle of the word pride? <laughs> when it's all about me, that's where it's not good. So I've even seen it. Obviously, that's just who I was an individual. But then I've been an employer and a coach. I was a baseball coach for 12 years. I ran our family business for 30 years. Had young kids. I had high school. We had 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, all different walks of life. And it would always fascinate me. I would try to correct them. And I did it in a very grace-filled way. I never, people, the employees would say, well, Brian yelled at me. No, I just corrected you. Because most of the problem we've had is the people who have corrected us have come with a hammer, come without love. So what we've done, we've put up walls. Then it hard, it's hard for me to receive correction, even if it's in a loving, graceful way. I know some of you don't want to talk about it. But I would correct, I would try to correct one of our employees. I'd say, hey, you know, Joe. Oh, no, no, I know. I'd say, you need to do, oh, I know. How many, how, how many have kids? Have you heard that one from your kids? Try to correct them. Oh, I know. And I'm going, no. 
you don't know. Because if you did know, we wouldn't have this conversation every other week. So it's learning to be humble and grace-filled. Oh, I know. I had a friend. I, I had a friend. His name is Shane. He's gone. He went to be with the Lord. And he, he was kind of the same cloth. Super sharp, super talented. He was just a sharp dude, but he wouldn't have ever admit that he was wrong. And, and I, I would share this with you, too. Um, this is for some of you younger guys, for some of us who have been a little more mature you might have, might be late. Um, my dad was a really good man. I lost my dad when I was 38. Hardworking German, very perfectionist, very smart, intelligent athlete, all that stuff. I never once heard my dad admit that he was wrong. Ever. So, as a boy growing up, what's my model? Well, I can't admit that I'm wrong because that's men don't do that. So I'm talking to somebody in this room. Then I got saved. I'm thinking that. I'm changing my family tree with this one. So when I blew it, I was very intentional. The Lord even spoke this before I was born again. He said, one of the greatest things your boy, your kids, especially your two boys, one of them is a pastor here, can ever do is not see you succeed in business or athletics, whatever is for you to admit when you're wrong, because that will give them license as a man when they get older to admit it's okay to be wrong. And it's okay, not only okay, but it's good to admit and own when you make a mistake. So I can't tell you how many times, I, it's humbling when you have to apologize to your two-and-a-half-year-old for yelling at him, and you know, probably pinned Ryan up to the wall because he was always mouthing off. And I say, buddy, what you did went wrong. It wasn't good, but I, I ask you to forgive me because I, what I did was not right. Guys, some of you, <clears throat> you're modeling what you want your kids, grandkids to see. So I just have to share that. Well, my buddy Shane, back to him real quick. Shane was one of these guys, and we were both believers. And he, I, I was really so fresh that he would never admit that he's wrong. And he figured, if I'm right, then I can treat anybody the way I want to. So I, was, I went through and started, I thought, well, I'm going to show him. And so if you have a list of scriptures, we're not going to maybe go through those. I might read them or not. But I went through Proverbs, and Proverbs is full, full, full. As a matter of fact, in one of my journals, I just end up, because I know me, I put it in the back, instruction, correction, discipline, anything has to do with that, I journal it and put it, I just write it down. It's for me. Well, anyway, I started on, remember, guys, remember three by five index cards before they had phones? I mean, so I started writing all these scriptures down on receiving instruction, being coachable, being teachable, and I thought, man, am I going to show Shane? So I'm, I'm putting all these verses together on these three by five cards, and I'm getting ready to give it to him, and the Lord says, these aren't for Shane. Because I was going to prove how right I was about him trying to be so right. Never gave them to him. Never gave them to him. Okay, so we're going to talk about three areas real quick. Three areas or key areas, and I think they get a little harder. Number one is instruction and coaching. I think for most of us, if you're taking a new job, if you're an athlete, if you're trying to grow vocationally, we're pretty good. What's instruction? It's a direction calling for compliance. It's the act of informing or teaching its direction. You know, it's, I think we all do pretty good. I, you know, if I go fish with somebody who's smarter, and I'm learning a lot about saltwater fishing, so I try to listen to guys who know what they're talking about, even if, even if they don't, they, you know, they act like they do. Uh, but I, I want to learn. It's like I'm receiving instruction. And just be careful. Sometimes they give you bad equipment. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking it in. I'm a learner. It's like I want to learn. And I would encourage all of you, I don't care if you're 20 or 92 in this room, never quit being a learner. My gosh, there's so much to learn. I, I learned so much on this Hawaiian trip. I learned that my friend Jimmy invented the selfie. Who knew? He claims that he invented the selfie and that there's two sides of toilet paper. One has a phone. Anyway, you, anyway, I, you, there, you, there's always things to learn. So I think most of us, if you're like me, yeah, I want to see instruction. And I, even I've been doing ministry for a lot of years, but there have been times I've been had instructed and there was a time I got corrected on something and it was a gut check because I could feel my flesh rise up. I don't like to be told what to do, but then the Lord said, you want to be better? Secondary, and we're not going to, we could spend lots of time, but I want you guys to have a good time at your tables. Secondary is correction. I think this is where it gets a little tougher. I don't know anybody who likes to be told what they're doing is wrong. But if you and I can't be corrected, we can't improve. And this is true in every phase of life. Every phase of life. Now, you all know this, but I'm a word nerd, so I look them up. Where correction, actually, one of the references here. <laughs> I have an 1828 version of the Noah Webster Bible. It's a reprint. Uh, Noah Webster was a born-again uh, Christian. Actually, about 30% of his uh, definitions have scripture references now. Yeah, it's amazing. We've come a long way, haven't we, as a country? It's too bad. Um, 
Anyway, correction is the act of correcting. This is really the essence of correction. It's to bring you back. It's to bring you back to a place that you were or you need to be. That's, that really caught my eye. Saw, see, saw that twice. The act of bringing back from error. The Bible definition of correction is whatever tends to connect the moral conduct, bring you back from error. So correction. And here's the deal. I've, you know, again, I've, I've had to deal with correction. I, I, I'm still here. I got a corrective word from Pastor Bobby. I had one or two decisions to make. I could heed that correction or I could bristle up. And, you know, he was spot on. It's like, this one wasn't even that hard because I baptized somebody on, actually, they might be in this room. It's okay, I won't share. Anyway, I did something. I didn't go through the proper protocols because I just made a call. And I realized, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I went back and apologized to the teams and I have peace. So we need to be, be willing to be corrected. And then discipline. You know, the word discipline, some of us like it, some of us don't. You know, discipline, you know, the, the, uh, how many of you would consider yourself a disciple of Jesus? Or, um, we're getting there. I mean, we're all fin- we're not, none of us are finished product, okay? Just so you know. So you can all raise your hand. Um, the word disciple literally means a disciplined one. You know, if, if I want to be more like Jesus, I have, there has to be some disciplines in my life. I read the Bible every day. I spend time with him. There's certain things I do, certain things I don't do. Not that I'm super spiritual. I just know me. I have guardrails in my life because I know what I'm capable of apart from the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and the men of God. So discipline means correction, chastisement, punishment. That's kind of the harsh part. But we know discipline, athletes have to be disciplined. There are certain things you do in order to achieve a certain task, goal, or purpose. We do that in business. We do that vocationally. We do that athletically. Discipline. So how do you deal with instruction? How do you deal with correction? And how do you do with this? A lot of times we have to receive discipline because we didn't receive the correction. Are you with me? And we all know. I mean, some of you, you, get, you, have, you have some bosses who's like, oh, I'd like to tell him what to do. I'm being honest. That might be. You might have a different opinion. But guys, when you follow the word of God, it always works. Humility being humble. You know, um, I want to say this. Bob Goff, I love reading him. I read his devotional every morning. He wrote Love Does, Everybody Always. His, uh, his devotional, Living Grace, Walk in Love, is so good. Uh, he has a unique revelation of the love of God. He talks about, um, instead of being right, be loved. He says, being right is overrated. And you know what? I've learned that, too. Here's the deal. Um, you know, Dennis and I, we can be, we can be in, a, in a conversation together. Or let's say I'll pick on Steve. I know you a little better. Steve and I, we can disagree, but you know what? I can still respect him. And you know what? I can be, I can be factually right in our disagreement and be relationally wrong. Man, well, I was right. I proved my point. Yeah, and I killed everybody in the process. Is that the goal? And I'm, I'm going to say, I'm just going to be honest, guys. I think it's more of, a, more of an issue with us men than women. I know some women deal with this as well, but it's pride. It's being willing to admit that you're wrong. I, I share this at a wedding, and I'm going to share this here because it's a relation. I, there's, there's nine words. There's three sets of three words that if we use on a regular basis, it will improve any relationship that you have. And if you're married, this is a really good one, but just in any relationship. And they get a little harder depending on who you are and your personality. First set of three words is, I love you. Going back to my dad. I never heard my dad say he loved me. I knew he did until about the last three or four years of, our, of his life. And I thought, oh, there's another one. We're going to change the family tree on that one. And I thought, my kids are going to get tired of hearing me tell them how much I love them. Hey, Ryan, I know, Dad, you love me. I love you, second set of three words. I am sorry, parentheses, and mean it. <laughs> Come up, parents say, go tell your brother you're sorry. You, you said it, but you were not sorry. <laughs> you were obedient, but you weren't submissive. And the last set of three words, I still sh- struggle with these. I was See, here's what I tell couples, and this is true of any relationship. I don't think God cares so much. Let's see, JD and I have a disagreement. I don't think God is so much interested in who's right. He's really interested in the relationship being right. Two different things. And again, this is coming, uh, got to be right. No. You know what? My, I have so much more freedom. If I'm in a dispute or conflict, I just assume I'm wrong. I just start with that baseline. I'm wrong, and if I'm right, that's a bonus. And this is a big thing for me, because if you knew me before, pride, ego, vanity, I have had to struggle with my whole life. 
And last, I'm going to make one more statement, and then we're going to turn to table leaders. If you can't receive instruction, correction, and discipline, you won't grow, and you can't become any better than you are right now. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I'm going to do it. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. I'm going to read these scriptures in the back. Just you don't have. To, I'm just going to read some of these, and we're going to go to table time. I'm going to read this last one. Guys, but here's God's word. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates, hates correction is stupid. That's <laughs> a wise man listens to advice. A mocker doesn't listen to rebuke. All these are Proverbs, by the way. Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. He who scorns instruction will pay for it, but he who respects a command is rewarded. He who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever Heeds correction is honored. There's some typos here. Whoever heeds correction shows prudence. He who hates correction will die. A mocker resents correction. Whoever heeds correction gains understanding, and on and on and on. This is only about a third of them. I, I, just, I just took a snapshot out of my journal. They're, there's full of it in the book of Proverbs. By the way, if you want something to read, I, I highly recommend it. I've been doing it probably for 35 years. Whatever, uh, whatever day of the month it is, you read that chapter of Proverbs. Today I read chapter 2 of Proverbs. Proverb a day. Keeps the idiot away. It really does. Because it talks about the wise and the foolish. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the wise column. I don't want to be in the foolish column. Are you with me? All right. Hey, thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, Cape Men's more than just a Tuesday night men's group. So in order to find out all that we have going on, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our video content.